Now to illustrate the third and final difference, uh, let's take another example, right? Um, we're going to move on to a second conversation John's having with a, uh, an AI agent, you know, show me my last five transactions. And the bot responds back, you know, you spent a bunch of money at Whole Foods and, and Amazon and Starbucks and whatever not. This is, you know, pretty straightforward, nothing you wouldn't see in, in, a, in an app. But let's look at the next question that John asks out here. So he says, how much am I spending on groceries each month, right? And the agent responds, saying your average monthly spend on groceries is $225. And by the way, here's a pretty little chart that shows you your average spend on a monthly basis on groceries for the last six months, right? We're already in the realm of what is beyond the possibility of apps. And then let's, let's take, take this a step forward, you know, then let's look at the next question. So John's now gonna ask, well, you know, how does my grocery spend compare to others? And this is where there's an opportunity for conversationally to really turn that conversation into magic. So you've got a response here that says, you know, you have two adults and two children in your household. The median monthly grocery spend for a similar household in New York, which is where John is, you know, in your income bracket is $250. So if you're spending $225, you're better off than the median, right? And, and, and this brings me to my third and final observation or point about conversational AI is that apps are constrained by code. You can't do this in an app, but conversational AI can leverage generative AI, which goes substantially beyond the realm of just fetching simple information can provide insight, can provide wisdom. And that's the third key point. 